Red Hat OpenStack services on OpenShift, or as I like to call it, Red Hat OpenStack 18 is the newest version of maybe the most popular open source private cloud distribution out there. This video will walk you through the installation process of this new version. And trust me, you want to see it as it's vastly different from all the other OpenStack versions from Red Hat. With this new version, Red Hat has decided to make a rather huge departure from a previous installer called Director, all triple-O in upstream. The new direction is the hottest application platform you might have heard of, OpenShift. It is big deal since the older triple-O has been used for Red Hat OpenStack solutions for almost a decade. What are the potential benefits and drawbacks, you might ask? First, the biggest promise is simplified lifecycle, which to be honest, historically has been its biggest weakness. The installation and upgrades time of the control plane has been trimmed down to minutes, although you still need to account for configuring the deployment, which in my experience takes just as long as the previous versions but that potentially could also be improved. OpenShift comes with a plethora of management tools, including Advanced Cluster Management, ACM, or Argo CD that can turn your manually configured OpenStack into modern GitOps-based lifecycle private cloud. A separate video would be required for a GitOps approach to the OpenStack, and let me know in the comments down below if that's something you would want to see. The biggest drawback is to have two different platforms to learn and manage for your private cloud, OpenStack and OpenShift, which also translates to more abstraction layers for potential troubleshooting. Thankfully, there's more OpenShift and Kubernetes talent out there that you can ask for help or hire. Did you see what I just did there? Turn the major disadvantage into a benefit and nobody noticed. Now strap yourself in, we're going over architecture first. If you have seen any of my other OpenShift videos, you might be familiar with this picture. Standard flat network OpenShift architecture with three dedicated controllers and number of dedicated hyperconverged workers. In my case, it's also three. We're going to add three or more additional boxes for the OpenStack hypervisor. Now, to make your OpenShift container platform OpenStack ready, you will need to install a few additional operators. Metal 3 is optional, but can be crucial if you want to bootstrap bare metal OpenStack computes. We need a very popular NM state operator for provisioning all additional OpenStack networks like CTL plane, API, storage, and more. Just like with the previous versions of Red Hat OpenStack, the network isolation is highly recommended. Next is Metal LB operator. The name can be a bit misleading. Let's emphasize the LB portion of the name for load balancer. MetalLB allows us to create and manage all the required virtual IPs for OpenStack networking. Telemetry generated by OpenStack will be handled by the cluster observability operator. The new feature of OpenStack 18 is enhanced security with TLS everywhere deployed out of the box. And the next operator, CERT manager, is there to handle all the certs. Last, but certainly not least, is OpenStack Operator, which will help us with the lifecycle of OpenStack services running on top of OpenShift. After deploying all these OpenShift operators, the second step is to configure our OpenStack control plane. I will dive into configuration later, but the result of this step is all the Red Hat supported OpenStack services running on your OpenShift workers. The last part of the architecture is the OpenStack compute plane. First, deployment of the bare metal nodes, and after that, services running on top. First note that I have marked Ceph with a different color. That's because Ceph in OpenStack 18 is no longer part of the overall OpenStack lifecycle. You will have to use Ceph ADM to provision it separately. Every Ceph implementation in OpenStack 18, even hyperconverged, is considered as externally provided. Because I didn't have Ceph at the time of control plane deployment, I'll have to go back and also update a few of the storage related services on my control plane to accommodate the HCI storage. If you have additional hardware resources, I would highly recommend dedicating separate nodes for the Ceph to not have to deal with back and forth between control and compute plane like I did here. And by the way, you could also use the same external Ceph to provide storage for both platforms, OpenStack and OpenShift. Let's jump into the actual installation part. I'm going to start from the point where vanilla OpenShift bare metal cluster is already in place. 
If you need help with this prerequisite step, please check some of my previous videos that walk through that portion of the deployment in the detail. I'll also link them in the description down below. We will need to load up some operators, CERT Manager, Cluster Observability Operator, Kubernetes NM State, MetalLB, and OpenStack. If you're doing this for the first time, it's a straightforward point and click operation. Go to Operator Hub, find each of the mentioned operators and simply install it by following on-screen instructions. Easy peasy. If you are an advanced OpenShift user, however, you already know any of these steps are available via CLI, API or GitOps automation. We need to create a new namespace for OpenStack and adjust security context constraints for it. OpenStack 18 does not provide randomized passwords for all its services, so we have to take care of it ourselves. Let's generate the password and load them up to the OpenShift secrets. Next up is network configuration and there are multiple networks that need to be created. CTL plane, internal API, tenant or storage are some of the must-haves. As mentioned earlier, OpenShift uses NM state operator for these tasks. First, we need to create node network configuration policy or NNCP in short to slice our physical network interfaces into multiple VLANs. The second step is to create a network attachment definition that provides these VLANs to OpenStack services in form of MAC VLANs for best performance. I'm going to attach my configuration repository if you'd like to reference my work. We need virtual IPs to have the ability to load balance our traffic across our cluster. Metal LB is used to manage VIPs and for that we need IP address pool and L2 advertisement. Finally, the last networking step is to define netconfig, which is an OpenStack specific CRD. Netconfig allows for defining IP pool allocation for our data plane. Again, check out the attached repository for more references. We're done with the networking and the next part might be one of the biggest upgrades the Red Hat OpenStack 18 has to offer and that's deploying a control plane. We're going to define an OpenStack control plane CRD that describes all the services and its capabilities. This is where you can go with vanilla deployment or choose to inject all types of customizations. My favorite way of completing this task is by starting with a provided complete example and then reviewing each section for Nova, Keystone, Glen, Cinder and all other services to make adjustments based on my needs. Since I have not had a Ceph, my software defined storage available when I first started, I had to set replicas to zero for storage related services in the first run. Later, after I complete my hyperconverged deployment, I will come back to this file and update it with Ceph information. This unfortunately is a drawback of the HCI architecture of Red Hat OpenStack 18. On the positive change, please note that the OpenStack 18 deployment model takes full advantage of the Nova sales functionality with cell zero being a primary and cells one and beyond are used for the tenant or production deployments and hopefully provide even better scalability down the road. Once we're happy with the configuration file for the control plane, we can apply it and monitor the progress. This part is surprisingly fast and once it's done, you can validate the running OpenStack service. Well, sort of. We still need to attach our hypervisors, aka OpenStack computes, which brings us to the next sections of this installation. We start data plane configuration by defining few secrets for Ansible installer, Nova migration, subscription manager, Red Hat container registry, and Libvirt. This time I won't share my configuration files with you for obvious reasons, but feel free to reference the official documentation linked in the description down below. Next, you need to decide if you want the OpenShift Metal 3 operator to bootstrap your OpenStack computes or have third-party tools do that. There are instructions provided for both. For your own provisioning tool, ensure that you deploy your machines with RHEL 9.4 image and configure networking to be accessible from the OpenShift platform. I have decided to take advantage of the Metal Cube. Hopefully, unlike me, you have access to modern hardware with a compatible Redfish BMC interface that can be used with a virtual media mechanism. I did not and had to fall back to the rather old and insecure IPMI slash Pixie method. 
which by the way is not supported by Red Hat, so use it at your own discretion. Well I had no choice, but thankfully it worked for me, so I'm including my configs for your reference. Similarly to as we configured the control plane with a single YAML file, we'll have to define an equivalent for our compute data plane. I have the same recommendation for this file as I had for the control plane. Start with the provided full example file and go backwards with adjusting setting based on your environment. You'll find my version of this config file in the same place as before. Apply OpenStack data plane node set and wait for it to finish. At this point, you should already have a bare metal nodes deployed with RHEL running. First, ensure Ceph HCI Pre is part of your services in OpenStack data plane node set, then deploy Ceph storage on your compute nodes. The detailed Ceph installation instructions go beyond the scope of this video, but I'm going to include configuration files used in my environment. Plus, you can find the official docs down in the description of this video. Final step for the HCI implementation is to rerun the control plane and data plane deployment with modified sections for storage services such as Cinder, Glance, Manila, Swift or Nova Ephemeral that hook them up to the pre-provisioned Ceph storage. Okay, you can breathe now. And enjoy your fresh OpenStack private cloud with managed services running in OpenShift. How cool is that? Can you think of any other benefits or drawbacks of this new architecture? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope this video has been helpful and thanks for watching.